Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the MBAA defends East Hampton Airport, NASA's messenger meets Mercury the hard way. What's this? Another flying car. I'm Brie Cross, it's May 4th, 2015. Welcome to today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. According to the MBAA, East Hampton town officials are poised to implement a set of noise and access restrictions that the association has warned are unfair, unreasonable, and unjustly discriminatory. Town officials have developed a list of what they define as noisy aircraft, which includes many jets and most helicopters. Steve Brown, MBAA Chief Operating Officer, said, quote, As a public use airport receiving federal funds, East Hampton is bound by grant assurances and other regulations that require it to operate within compliance with federal aviation law and policy, unquote. Brown added that in addition, the restrictions on operations, especially during the summer months, will have an irreparable economic impact on the airport's businesses, as well as on the jobs, investments, and revenue that East Hampton Airport provides to the local area. So let's see, you launch a spacecraft and it crashes into a planet and that's considered a good thing. Well, if you're NASA, it is. And that's exactly what happened to its messenger spacecraft as it concluded its mission by crashing onto the surface of the planet Mercury. A NASA planetary exploration mission came to a planned, but nonetheless dramatic end last Thursday when it slammed into Mercury's surface at about 8,750 miles per hour and created a new crater on the planet's surface. John Grunsfeld, the Associate Administrator for NASA's Science Mission Directorate in Washington said in part, quote, we are celebrating MESSENGER as more than a successful mission. The MESSENGER mission will continue to provide scientists with a bonanza of new results as we begin the next phase of this mission, analyzing the existing data already in the archives, unquote. Mission Control was able to monitor signals from MESSENGER for about 20 minutes after it had impacted the surface because of the vast distance between Mercury and Earth. After the break, just what we need, another flying car. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Now certified, Aspen Avionics Single Band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. In case you are one of the masses anxiously awaiting for the announcement of a finished, certified, and available combination automobile and airplane, here is an update for you. A German company has unveiled a prototype of the latest entry into the quest for a truly rotable aircraft. It's called the Carplane. The company of the same name has been working on the concept since 2012. The Carplane's two occupants sit in individual cockpits and the wings fold up in between the cockpits in its road configuration. It's reported that the car plane is powered by a two-cylinder, 150 horsepower engine that powers both the wheels and the propeller and can operate both at the same time to provide short takeoff roll. Top speed for the car plane is 109 miles per hour as a car and about 125 miles per hour as an airplane. The company says it hopes that the airplane can be certified by 2018. No pricing has been announced. 
Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Arrow Video of the Week. Final lift off of In this video, you'll see an entertaining time lapse of the building of Boeing's new next generation 737 airliner. It's hard to believe they really figured out how to make all those parts fit. To find this video, simply search Building Boeing's Next Generation 737 on YouTube. After these messages, robots to the rescue. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment that we like to call Around the Patch. An unmanned K-MAX UAS helicopter has conducted the first collaborative casualty evacuation. In the test, an unmanned vehicle evaluated the location of a simulated injured person and the KMAX UAS provided the airlift recovery. The Air Force continued its support of disaster relief in Nepal with the arrival of a second C-17 Globemaster in response to the earthquake that rocked the country on April 25th. They are airlifting critical personnel and cargo. The construction of the new Airbus Asia Training Center in Singapore is now underway, following the completion of initial groundbreaking last week. Due to open in the first quarter of 2016, the facility will offer type rating and recurrent training. The FAA has released a safety alert for operators advising airplane owners and operators of DHC-8-100 series aircraft about the potential for uncommanded propeller feathering events. The problem is when PCUs and adapters are improperly installed, repaired, or overhauled. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA has issued an airworthiness directive after being advised by Boeing of an issue identified during laboratory testing. The software counter internal to the generator control units, referred to as GCUs, will overflow after 248 days of continuous power, causing the GCUs to go into fail-safe mode. If all four main GCUs, which are associated with the engine mounting generators, were powered up at the same time, after 248 days of continuous power, all four GCUs will go into fail-safe mode at the same time, resulting in a loss of all AC electrical power, regardless of the flight phase. The FAA says the AD is an interim action. The manufacturer is currently developing a GCU software upgrade that will address the unsafe conditions identified with this AD. The AD is effective immediately, but the FAA will accept comments until June 15th. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, have a wonderful Monday.